Well, hello and welcome to our Bible study. We are in Ephesians and this is lesson four. Last time together, we got through chapter one and just a little bit dipped into chapter two. And uh, there we concluded that we uh, merit uh, the grace of God. We, we are um, brought into God's family through the blood of Jesus Christ as Paul is teaching us here. And so we're going to continue now in chapter 2. And let's go ahead and look at chapter 2, verse 4. But because of his great love for us, uh, the motive uh, for our salvation is what Paul is talking about. God, who is rich in mercy, as he lavished upon us all those blessings, so too is he rich in mercy, uh, has made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. He has provided grace that has uh, enabled that spark to awaken us, that, that quickens us, that, that brought us to life. And we uh, became interested in Him is what Paul is talking about. And as we read, uh, read it is, it's uh, by grace that, that you have been saved is what Paul is getting at. Salvation begins with God's grace. He provides the grace that awakens us and enables us to respond uh, to Him. Uh, it, it's by grace that you have been saved, is what Paul is saying. And he continues on, God raised us up with Christ and seated us with Him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. Well, we, we just saw at the end of chapter 1 that God raised Jesus to that position, to be co-equal with God Himself, and He is seated at God's right hand. And now we read here in chapter 2 the, that the God provided this grace that enabled us to move into the family of God, and we're seated at, at Christ's right hand, and we were right there with Him. Why? And Paul says, in order that in the coming ages, uh, this kind of, in a sense, way out in the future, he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. Now, I, I like this picture. Uh, when, when I die, when, uh, when I, I fall over, I hit the ground, hit the bed, whatever it may be, where do I go is what uh, I would ask. And Paul says, uh, you know, absent from the body, present with God. We're going to, to step out into eternity, into the presence of Christ. And uh, I certainly hope when I do that he, he looks at me and says, well done, good and faithful servant. Uh, what I don't want to hear him say is, what were you thinking, Tim? Uh, but you know, we'll... we'll uh, well done and, and good and faithful servant is a, a great phrase to hear. And, um, and Paul says, through the blood of Jesus Christ, and only through that are we going to have the potential of, of hearing those words. Uh, there we are, and we are, we're, we're in his presence by the blood of Jesus Christ for all eternity. And, and I suspect that out there in eternity, there, there was going to be a whole lot uh, to do. And I, I'm looking forward to, to the job uh, assignments that are out there. I, I think uh, the idea of, of uh, uh, sitting on a cloud playing a harp, uh, I remember in my younger days, I thought that would be incredibly boring. And I'm, I don't know if I uh, have changed my mind in any way uh, there as well. It just seems not uh, a really fun thing to do. Now, obviously, I, I'm, I'm stepping out into some opinions that, that I'm personally having here and not uh, so much uh, biblically-based uh, or backed material as I, I speculate here about uh, clouds or work or, or whatever. But I, I get some ideas from Paul that um, there is some intentionality in, in eternity that, that God has for us, that... Uh, um, that the, the greatest blessing in life is that, that God has, has uh, given us um, uh, creative work to do. Um, I, I can remember getting my first job as a, a young man, my dad waiting for me uh, to get home and, and asking how the, the day went. And uh, I, in a sense, I can remember saying it was terrible. 
I, I had to do all of this stuff. I had to learn all of this stuff. People were telling me what to do. And um, yeah, in a sense, complaining about a, a bit of my, my first day at work and, and my dad uh, looking up at me, he said, well, I guess that's why they call it work. Um, but but really, um, you know, I, I have to say I've, I've been blessed uh, that, that most of the work that I've, I've done in my life, um, I do enjoy it. I, I've had a, 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 a real privilege of doing um, things for a living that, that I enjoy doing. I'm not saying everything, but um, um, it's a huge blessing to be in a position that I'm in and in interacting with, with uh, folks and, and spending time here with you as I study God's Word and, and uh, teach a little bit. Um, uh, this is a great gift that God is, has given me. And I think when we, we get out into eternity, uh, one of the greatest gifts that God will have for us is our creative work. Um, some, uh, there'll be something, I believe, that that will be just, uh, we, we really love, we love to get out and do, um, get out and do, and it'll be all, be in, in eternity. We'll get to keep on doing those things, and I I can't wait to see what those things are that God will will uh, give us to to accomplish, to be artistic, to uh, uh, to enjoy the beauty of of His creation. But this passage here in Ephesians that that God is going to do all this. He He ha, He has raised us up with Christ. Paul is saying in order that in the coming age uh, He might show His incomparable riches. Uh, of grace is what Paul is talking about. So, so here I'll, I'll be in heaven, walking down the street, and there will be three or four uh, folks coming the other direction, and these three or four folks of uh, uh, will be somebody I know, maybe, and and the three or four uh, will uh, maybe know me pretty well, and I'll be walking down the streets of heaven, and you'll you'll uh, you will be coming, they'll be coming, and um, the opposite direction pass by me and I'll hear uh, one of these uh, people say, how in the world did he get here? And uh, maybe the other one in a group will respond, well, it only goes to demonstrate God's mercy. And that's it. Uh, we will be there, Paul says, um, uh, with Christ, in Christ. Uh, uh, the fact that we're there is is that Christ uh, will demonstrate His incomparable mercy uh, for us, and that that is why we're there. It's because of the mercy of of our God, and and the act of Jesus on the cross. Well, let's move down chapter two into verses eight through ten, and and these are some important verses. Um, it begins four, and, and here uh, uh, with that word four, we're kind of getting an idea here that um, Paul is, is summarizing um, his teachings, the things that he said before. So verses, uh, verse eight here. It is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. We are saved by grace through faith, and that grace is freely given by God. We respond to it in faith, and, and when we do, we move into the family of God. And once in the family of God, there's going to be plenty to do, uh, would be what Paul would say. Once in the family of God, as, as Paul said, the only thing that, that counts is your faith expressing itself in, in a life of active love or a life of, of good works. Uh, so once again, we, we get into the family uh, of God through grace, by faith. We live in the family of God by a life of, of good works, not, and it's not the other way around, and we've got to keep that straight. Verse 10, for we are God's workmanship, he created us in Christ to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. This is uh, quoting Paul here in verse 10. 
that, that whole idea of God having a, a destiny in mind for us from the, the very start, included in that destiny was, was a, a life of active love, living in the family of God and expressing that faith through a, a life of active love. God has a, a whole lot planned uh, for us, not only in, in this life, but out there in the eternity as well. God had in mind for us uh, each of our unique personalities. We all have a unique uh, personality that God created, and, and um, he is quite pleased with that unique personality. Uh, and, and he had us in mind and our unique characteristics, our unique um personalities. He had that in mind uh, before Genesis chapter 1 uh, with a plan for each one of us. He has a plan for each one of us. And, and if we cooperate with that plan, uh, that destiny will occur. That's what Paul's getting at. And the destiny doesn't stop the day we step out into eternity. There is a, a destiny out in eternity that is even greater, Paul's getting at. And God knows what it is. And if we stick with God's program, if we stick with uh, uh, God's vision, that's exactly what we're going to get when we arrive in eternity. Uh, you, know, you think about what Paul is saying here. I can't wait to, to find out what it is uh, that God has for me. And it'd be great to see what God has for you as well uh, out there in eternity. And I'd like to see in your future here as well. Uh, God has a plan for us here, an exciting uh, plan for us as well. Uh, what, does, what does God have planned? That might be our question. Well, I don't know. But I, I know that um, he does have a plan, and I can't wait to, to see what that is. In uh, the Gospel of John, uh, the, the King James Version uh, says that one of my favorite ways, um, Jesus is, is speaking in, in John. He's saying, I, I'm going away. Uh, you wait here. Uh, um, and uh, the technical or the proper, I'm going to uh, prepare a place for you. In my Father's house are many mansions. And I like the, that in the, the King James. In the NIV, it says rooms. Um, I'd be happy with a room, obviously, any of us would, but uh, I like that uh, mansion would be nice too, would it not? And he said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And he has, uh, you know, he's been gone for 2,000 years now. It's probably going to be a really nice place. So there we will, will uh, there will be out in eternity and it will just... Uh, as Paul says, it'll go, just go to demonstrate God's love and, and mercy towards us. And that's an astounding thing to think about, what Paul is saying here. Um, let me pull back out of Ephesians again. I've done the rabbit trail with John. Let's do one with Job as well. In the book of Job, um, if we've, um, I can't remember if we've looked at Job uh, together as a group or, or not, but Job has a, a horrible time in, in life, if, you, if you're familiar with his story. The book of Job um, falls out of the linear narrative of the Bible, Genesis through Esther. We're stuck kind of in a timeline from beginning to the time of, of Esther. And Job kind of pulls out of that timeline, so we're not getting the next time uh, period. It, it's... Uh, Matter of fact, many scholars think that Job was the, the first book written um, in, that's contained in our, our Bible. So Genesis through Esther is a linear timeline, and, and some could um, um, and, and you could sum up the narrative story if you take from Genesis to Esther, um, this idea of what uh, were to get out of that, uh, these uh, uh, string of books here is that, um, if, if you do what God says, it, it's going to go well with you. And then we get out of the linear narrative and we learn a few other lessons. And sometimes people, um, 
it begins to say in Job, I think in particular, uh, one of those lessons is sometimes people do exactly what God wants them to do and their life ends up in, in, in being a, a total disaster. And so we take Job as an example there. He, he is um, at this time, and I think there there's some nuances here and we'd have to do a, a, a much more detailed Bible study to uh, on Job to, to get all of this. And so I'm giving you a very broad um vision of Job here. But uh, as we take Job as an example, he's, he's the most righteous man around in his day. And, uh, and again, that saying a lot, but at the same time, uh, make sure you hear this, he was the most righteous man. That doesn't mean he was completely righteous, but he was the most righteous man around in his day. And yet horrible things happened to Job. Job is a, a story that that uh, talks about why bad things happen to good people. And Job demands, uh, in the process here, demands an answer. Isn't that pretty uh, uh, strong words here? But it's, uh, it's what Job did. He, he demands an answer from God. He said, look, I, I'm not perfect. Uh, I'm not a perfect person, but I have done, uh, I've done nothing to deserve what's happening to me. Well, God is, is teaching Job a lesson about himself, and himself being um, uh, um, Job, but also he's going to be teaching Job about uh, God. And, and, and Job's conclusion after he, he learns this lesson, and it's around Job 42, verse 5, where, where Job says, My ears had heard of you, I thought, he's basically saying, I, I thought I knew everything there was to know about God. I had heard of you, I had studied you, I would read all about you, but now my eyes have seen you. Now I have experienced you firsthand. My ears had heard of you, but now I have seen you, God. And, and so um, there's a difference here. Uh, and, and so he basically says, therefore, I, I take back everything I have said. I, I am comforted. And this is an interesting thought here that, that Job says, I am comforted about being dust. Um, now, I, I changed the, the, that translation from the NIV to a, a translation done by a fellow named uh, Stephen Mitchell. And, and if we get back to the book of Job, I, I'll uh, ever in study, I'll probably talk about this a little bit more. Um, uh, this idea uh, of being comforted at, at being dust seems kind of strange. We, we read in, in Genesis chapter 3 that, that God spoke creation into existence, if you remember that, but not us. Um, he created uh, from the dust of the earth, Genesis says. Uh, we're, we're created uh, from the dust of the, the earth, and, and uh, then he breathed into uh, us. And if we turn to Psalms 103, we really get a good picture, uh, illustration of, of this perspective, this idea of, of being dust. In Psalms 103, uh, at, at verses 13 and 14, this is a Psalms by David, or proclaimed to be of David, and, and uh, Psalms 103, 13 says, As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows, that is God knows, how, how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. Uh, God Almighty, creator of the universe, who, who made black holes and quasars, uh, uh, with one hand tied behind his back, uh, he's, uh, is, is God, he is God Almighty, El Shaddai, and basically David is saying, and we're not. Uh, we are dust. Uh, the distance between God and us is infinite. Uh, the, the problem with Job is Job's entire world, his entire relationship with God is totally self-referential. He, he decides he's not a bad guy, he's a righteous guy based on his evaluation of things. It, it, was, it was based on me, uh, on I, me, my. 
uh, kind of idea here. Uh, but no, God is God. And this is what uh, Job begins to discover. This is what David is proclaiming in, in Psalms 103, that, that we're but dust. Uh, what expectations can you have of dust? Well, uh, back over into Ephesians, when Paul says, we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we would walk in them. God has taken us who are but dust and elevated us to a position at the right hand of the Son of God, where in Galatians, Paul said that all of us, whether Jew or Greek, slave or free, male or female, we are all one in Christ. And, and so it's, you know, God's it. Uh, Paul wants us to think about this. Think about what God has done. He has elevated Christ to a position of being co-equal to God Himself, He is seated at His uh, Christ is seated at His right hand, and then He has taken us and elevated us from a position of dust to be seated at the right hand of the Son, uh, with with all the rights in in the family of God as the Son Himself. That is what God has done for us. And when we're in heaven walking around in eternity in the presence of Christ, the very fact that we are there is, is evidence of the magnitude, Paul is saying, of God's love and mercy toward us. And we get all of this uh, proclaimed to us um, from Paul's epistle, uh, his letter to the church in Ephesus. And I'll stop here today and look forward to uh, more time together, but maybe just think about that this week, what God has done for us, how He has elevated us who are by Scripture called dust to sit at the right hand of Christ and uh, with, with all the rights and privileges um, through His grace and mercy. Have a great week. Hope to see you Friday. God bless. See you soon. Bye now.